स्ट्रेटेजिक अफेयर्स सब्सक्राइब टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल क्लिक द बेल आईकॉन फॉर अपडेट्स You're watching Strat News Global. I'm Amitabh Bravi, and you're watching the Gist. Glad to welcome back uh, again, Ambassador Nitesh Sharma. He's been India's envoy to the US, to the UK, to Israel. He's in a book uh, as well, many books, but one in particular on Israel. Also, welcome to all our viewers who are watching this live and. Welcome to those viewers who picked this up on our YouTube stream. Ambassador Sharma, good to see you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Amitabh. Good to be back. Ambassador, just looking at uh, this, you know, half in person, half virtual uh, quad, as it's been called, quote unquote. Even the first one was quotes unquote for a long time uh, between the U.S., Israel, uh, India, and uh, the U.A.'s foreign ministers. Put it into perspective for us in terms of how we've reached this far. Well, it's a it's a very interesting, if uh, somewhat exploratory development, if I can call it that. And uh, I mean, you called it a quad. Quad seems to be the uh, flavor of the season. Uh, but you know, uh, the fact is that yes, there were four foreign ministers uh, on on the same platform, whether in person or 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 virtually. And and that's an interesting because of the composition uh, of the four. I mean, a few years ago, you wouldn't have thought that uh, uh, you know uh, an Indian foreign minister would be sitting on the same platform uh, as the UAE uh, and the Israeli foreign minister together. Uh, so that I think in that it is it shows that a uh, this has been possible because of the changes in the Middle East itself. Uh, the fact that the UAE, along with uh, some other uh, Arab nations like uh, Morocco, uh, Sudan, Bahrain, have uh, normalized, so to speak, their relationship with Israel. And it's no longer impossible for these uh, representatives of these countries, uh, officials, senior level officials and ministers, to meet face to face. So that, I think, is the most fundamental change, the so-called Abrahamic uh, Accords, although you have people questioning uh, that, term, uh, that term itself. The second aspect is that, you know, the role of the U.S. seems to be changing mm -hmm. because the U.S. has always been an active player in the Middle East. But very often with these Gulf states and all, it's been more a question of subsidizing their military security framework. Uh, rather than looking at, at other areas of, of engagement. And I think that is, is changing. And incidentally, the, both the Israel and UAE are the strongest regional uh, allies or partners of, of the United States. So that, that makes uh, things easier. And India, uh, India's own relationships with each of the three uh, particip other participants in this uh, so-called uh, Middle Eastern Quad is has been developing rapidly uh, mm -hmm. with the United States over the last 20 years, with Israel over the last 20, 25 years, ever since we started formal diplomatic relations, and more recently uh, with with the UAE in, in strategic terms. So we have been, so it's, it's all been happening, uh, you know, simultaneously, but with the formation or the meeting of this platform, you see a certain sort of plateauing of this into a, a more of a synergetic uh, arrangement, if I can call it that, although it may be too early to see the exact contours of this of this synergy. But I think politically it has been, uh, it, it signals that yes, all four countries are, uh, have got good relations with each other, have good, got good relations a level of trust with each of the partners, and therefore we can all uh, come and sit together. So let's see how it goes. Sure. Like you're saying, it's too early to see where it's uh, it's going, but uh, there must be an aim or a direction or a target. Uh, even the, the Quad, uh, which officially is not spoken of as an anti-China partnership, what really is these four countries, are these four countries sitting on the same table uh, hoping to achieve? 
Well, my guess would be that, you know, each of these four countries is, is sort of venturing forth into relatively unknown territory here. Uh, I mean, you have the UAE actually now sitting and talking to the Israelis or partnering with the Israelis. And they, they are very much aware that the other Arab nations are going to be watching uh, watching this. And not just the Arab nations, but nations like Turkey, Iran, uh, are going to be are going to be watching this with more than a certain amount of of interest, um, and and I think uh, even India. My guess would be that we would want to move very cautiously on on in this direction. We would like we moved on the Indo-Pacific Quad very slowly, cautiously, step by step, and our preference, I think, if if uh, I were to take a guess, would be to move in the non-security issues. You know, issues like environment, issues like trade. Uh, let's remember that, you know, uh, both these, uh, uh, we, we have about 12 times the trade with UAE that we have with Israel. And now that Israel and UAE are trading and we are talking of a possible FTA with Israel by June, then, then you know, it helps us to triangulate these things. Again, the triangle of democracies that we have built up with India, US and Israel, again, you know, we, we have a certain amount of trust and we can take that into areas like high tech, you know, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, uh, all, all these issues, because both the U, with UAE capital, Israeli technology, American backing and American technology. I mean, there is a lot of potential to be able to work together on this. But as I said, this is a, can be uh, politically a very thin ice. So we will, no doubt, move uh, very, very carefully on this. Just, uh, I'll get to um, you going, doing a deep dive into what you mean by uh, thin eyes, because there's a question that's coming from a viewer, 4D World. Do you think the recent infrastructure investments in Kashmir by UAE are linked to this new alignment? Is the UAE completely on board and just a point of integrated Kashmir as part of India? I mean, were they coincidental or the timing just happened together? Well, I, 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 you know, I, I, I am always a little, um, uh, little cherry of drawing these very immediate connections to developments that take place uh, between, you know, the two countries have become strategically very close. Uh, the UAE has particularly been helpful in counterterrorism activities, and uh, our, our, you know, information sharing on these issues has has improved considerably in these areas. But I think when we're talking of the meeting of the four countries, uh, uh, you know, uh, about the Middle East, uh, I, I don't think, I mean, I may be wrong, but I would I would think that it's part of an overall development of, of all the four countries uh, moving together mm -hmm. and not a particular quid pro quo for, for one particular uh, uh, development. When you talked a little earlier, Ambassador, about uh, the political thin ice that India would have to navigate in the region, what exactly are you referring to? Are you talking about, uh, say, uh, how our relations with Iran are developing on the other side of the spectrum is, of course, yeah. Turkey? Yeah, I, I think you see what, uh, in a way, the uh, you, we must remember that the normalization accords, which uh, uh, happened uh, during President Trump's time of, uh, you know, between, say, UAE and Israel. Uh, let's face it, nobody's talking about it. One of the reasons is Iran. Why, why these countries are getting closer together to Israel is that they, they have a common um, common front uh, against against Iran. And India has a very good relationship with Iran. So we would have to see uh, how we balance this. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it depends on what we do with these four countries and then what we do with Iran and how this, if this squad or the so-called uh, Quad is going to be seen as a as a as as a political, military, security, intelligence front against uh, Iran or, for that matter, against Turkey. I don't think that is something that we would like to project. So I think this is one part of the thin ice. The second part is that you know this the Middle East is uh, in a flux, but yet the Middle East is also very much. Uh, uh, you know, settling down into two different blocks. I mean, you have the traditional pro-monarchy, you know, Saudi Arabia, UAE, 
Jordan, Egypt, you know, the anti-Muslim Brotherhood gang, uh, I shouldn't say gang, the group, uh, with, uh, uh, with Israel uh, today uh, against uh, Turkey, Iran, Qatar. Uh, so, you know, you are at the same time, uh, so, so you don't want to get locked down into uh, this kind of block politics. You don't want to get uh, drawn into uh, the kind of proxy wars that happen uh, in, in the Middle East, like, you know, for instance, things happening in, in, in Yemen that were happening, you know. So, uh, so I think we will like to be very careful that while we take advantage of the fact that we have good relations with the UAE, we have good relations with Israel and the US, and now that they're all moving together, then perhaps we should also be part of the larger economic benefits, the technology benefits, uh, the ability to play a role when we want to. After all, we, we have 8 billion people uh, in that region of, of Indian origin. And at the same time, we would try to keep our, uh, you know, our, our sort of, uh, coattails clean of getting getting bogged down into any kind of uh, political politically taking sides the second aspect i would say in terms of political uh, dangers that we will look out for is is you know the the other great powers are not quiet in the middle east the chinese the russians uh, i mean russia signed a strategic partnership with uae uh, two or three years ago uh, the chinese have been very active including uh, with their investments in in Israel's technology, in Israel's uh, port and mass transit uh, projects, uh, so I, I think here we do we want to. Perhaps we do, but the issue is, do we want to be seen as being part of another grouping, which is which becomes seen as a grouping against China, you know? So again, I think the tightrope walking that we have been doing in the Indo-Pacific Quad would, would continue to apply here. Maybe this one doesn't go as far as the Indo-Pacific Quad has already gone. After all, this is just one, one Zoom conversation or whatever the equivalent was uh, between four foreign ministers. So uh, I think let's not jump the gun. Let's watch how it goes. But these are the things I think I'm sure our policymakers, our uh, uh, foreign ministry, uh, is very much aware of and, and looking at. Uh, you mentioned the, the great powers, and there's a question from uh, Salvatore Babonis in uh, Australia. And thanks for the uh, super sticker, Salvatore, Australian dollars 10. Israel has long cooperated with Russia on defense technology despite its close ties to the US. Is it possible for India to perform a similar ba balancing act? Well, I think India has been performing this balancing act, Salvatore. Uh, I think, and 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 partly also with the help of Israel, uh, because because you know we have been long uh, uh, a consumer of uh, uh, Russian weapon systems uh, from the days of the Cold War, and we do have legacy uh, platforms for which we need to continue to depend upon upon Russia. And the Americans, uh, we have increased at the simultaneously our defense uh, supplies from the Americans from virtually uh, zero to 20 billion and, 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 and more today. So I think uh, this is something, and Israel in the meantime has also become a very important defense partner. Uh, so I think this is a balancing act which we, we need to do, we have to do, and we have to continue to, continue to convince uh, both sides uh, that uh, you know it doesn't harm the other so it's it's not always easy but i think so far so good india has been able to do it that balancing i don't know whether part of that balancing is the ministry of external affairs not issuing any particular details about this meeting the uh, americans have their uh, state the department says that even maritime security was discussed but that's the american point of view right Yes, I think I think you know the Eastern Mediterranean is not really India's maritime, uh, uh, you know, area of uh, uh, in that kind of uh, you know like the Indian Ocean is. So obviously, maritime security would be something of uh, interest, particularly since the Eastern Mediterranean is now become a very rich source of oil and natural gas, for which there will be more than one uh, one claimant. 
uh, and and you know this is going to be an area of uh, uh, of uh, future interest uh, if if not already present interest but i think yes maritime security certainly would be of interest more perhaps to uh, you know to israel us and the uae than india immediately but until uh, of course we begin to look at the you know the indian ocean side of things and the india us uh, india uae connect uh, in that regard but again you, you know what was discussed how much was discussed what it means uh, we as you rightly said we haven't seen much of that you talked about uh, iran a lot now uh, how turkey has been dealing with india and taking up issues whether it's uh, kashmir or you know or, uh, taking sides with pakistan in multilateral fora etc do you see this as being part of a way to counter uh, you know the turkey pakistan narrative I mean, uh, the EM was in uh, Armenia as well before this. Maybe I'm connecting too many dots there. Yeah, I, I think I think all these things happen uh, 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 sub at a subterranean level. I mean, you don't really go out there and say I'm going to go and go to this country because I want to counter uh, a some other country. I think it's a question of building long-term relationships, long-term network of relationships, and I think the. Uh, EM's recent uh, travels, whether they be in Central Asia or or in the Caucasus, uh, and and now to Israel, I think I think are, have all been very very significant because uh, these this really it become it is a politically an, an area which is which is always in flux in in many ways, and yes, you know, if Turkey is in a position uh, that it is wanting to look eastwards more and more in its own region and 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 express its influence in in many terms uh, because one one reason is is the the us's kind of stepping back away from the middle east you know at least in its traditional role even if you see on the israel palestinian issue uh, uh, the biden administration has been relatively quiet you know, traditionally, the American administration has always been a, a power broker, appointing a special envoy, and so on and so forth. This time, it's it's been a little quiet. They don't really see uh, much possibilities of improvement on that question at the moment. So, and 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 also, they've been trying to withdraw. I mean, Afghanistan has been one thing, but even otherwise, in their engagement um, uh, from the Middle East. So, this is something which which leaves it open i mean i think turkey sees more of a possibility of sort of stepping forth and and exerting its influence uh, and it's been a traditional uh, kind of uh, you know uh, uh, the big guy in that in that region i mean historically speaking so whether they can uh, come back given the uh, given the uh, world view of uh, erdogan uh, you know it remains to be seen so yes if if if, if, if our travels, if our engagements, if our partnerships uh, help us to build a network of relationships in different ways, uh, which which ultimately help us, you know, a on the issue of you know relations of another country with Pakistan or whatever. Although I don't think India any longer sees things uh, only from that one narrow prism. You uh, alluded to this earlier, this question from Varun Pratap Ambassador, but uh, how is uh, Saudi Arabia seeing this new alliance in this changing dynamics? Well, I think, you know, Saudi Arabia has not yet come onto the same kind of platform with Israel as, as UAE has. So I think there's something which they would be watching uh, with interest. Uh, and, you know, they would be seeing, again, our relations with Saudi Arabia having improved uh, quite dramatically. So I think that is something again, which you know we we should keep in mind that if if you know this kind of network is to be expanded, not necessarily with these four plus Saudi Arabia, that may take a, a while coming, if at all. Uh, but the fact is that again, Saudi Arabia is a source of capital. It can be a source of uh, you know influence in the area. It's a source. It's an, a country which is important for us in terms of our working diaspora. So I think, again, and they have a very good relationship with the U.S. So again, all that is a positive as far as this uh, meeting is concerned. 
and again, uh, pertinent in terms of Indian historic foreign policy ambassador, a question from Sai Prasad, how will India balance Israel and uh, Palestinian relationship? Well, again, I think, uh, you know, we have managed to uh, to develop our relationship tremendously. As you know, till 1992, we didn't have diplomatic relations yeah. with Israel, despite having recognized it in, in 1950. Uh, and we have been strong supporters of the Palestinian cause. Now, again, I think as far as we are concerned, that continues uh, uh, to be the position. Uh, I think we have in many ways managed to dehyphenate these relationships and we continue to support the Palestinian cause and that cause that that support comes out in what we do with the Palestinians bilaterally or the positions we take in in the in multilateral uh, fora where of course also we have seen in recent years a certain amount of uh, fine tuning of our position a balancing of our position so that you know, our, our strategic partnership with Israel is, is not harmed. But, you know, frankly, the unfortunate thing here is uh, not our balancing, but the fact that nothing is moving on the ground uh, on that question between Israel and the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And and until that happens, really, uh, you know, another country's positions are to that extent what they are. You know, they haven't, they have not been meeting recently. I don't think the two leaderships are quite in a position at the moment to engage. Although the new Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has said that he is going to aim to shrink that conflict uh, and not let it sort of harden and expand into different areas. So I think as far as that is concerned, that's a good sign. But beyond that, nothing much seems to have happened. Right. So I... As uh, Sai points out, uh, Ambassador, extremely busy foreign policy week for the external affairs minister in particular and uh, the MEA. He was in Central Asia and Armenia last week, Israel. Uh, next stop, Russia, unless he knows something that I, I don't know. It's not the EM who's going there. I think it's uh, GS5, JP Singh, and possibly our uh, Qatar ambassador who's uh, going for the Taliban talks. But thanks to all our viewers and thanks again to uh, ambassador sarna for his uh, experience and his expertise uh, that he's provided here on uh, stack news global ambassador thank you and uh, just a reminder to our viewers just in case you haven't already subscribed to our youtube channel uh, do that and increase our numbers there do follow our social media handles for the latest news and analysis from an indian perspective this is the gist on stack news global i'm amit Abhi.